Welcome to the channel Let's Talk Politics. In this video, I'm going to be doing my updated 2024 presidential election prediction between the incumbent president Joe Biden and former president Donald Trump. And this is going to be a rematch in the governor's race from November 2nd from Virginia and New Jersey will also be taking place as a little bit of effect in this race because it's obviously going to be affected in this race. Virginia is supposed to be a safe democratic state and a Republican won it. Um, so that's obviously going to affect the 2024 election. And same New Jersey. New, Jer New Jersey is a safe democratic state and it's down to the wire. So that's going to affect the 2024 presidential election, obviously in favor of the Republicans. So those whose effects, um, it's definitely going to swing in favor of the Republican Party in 2024. And also, uh, there's also going to be another effect in Minnesota, where in Minneapolis, they voted no uh, to abolish the police uh, by 9%, which, which is also going to affect in that state. So yeah, these three effects uh, uh, will will affect the 2024 election, predict my, my, my election prediction. That's why uh, it's updated with these uh, three changes happening in these states so first let's start off with the state of nevada i personally think nevada will go to joe biden by 1.5 percent and that is due to the fact that many californians are actually moving to nevada which is why it's making the state more blue because most of california is blue and uh that's going to help the democrats and also due to the um uh, the the border surge i mean nevada is is actually more uh, actually a little bit far away from the border but people from you know Mexico like illegal immigrants go to Arizona and they eventually make their way down to Nevada which uh gives the democrats the advantage so yeah that's going to give the democrats advantage i have it going to Joe Biden by uh, a tilt margin it's going to be very close just like it has been in the past few elections uh no real changes uh from 2020 and now Arizona, I do have it flipping back to Donald Trump. I do believe he can and will flip the state back to the Republicans. I believe 2020 was a little bit of a down year for the Republicans, and they did not have advantages. Um, and I believe in 2024, it, it, it's. It, I think both parties will have advantages. One advantage for the Democrats will obviously be the border. Uh, those illegal immigrants will be voting Democrat. That's what the Democrats at least try to want them to do which is why they open up the border. And another advantage for Republicans is people in these southern states like Arizona are tired of seeing their cities be unsafe because of the migrant surge and their cities being filthy. And we're now seeing Joe Biden trying to give each uh, illegal immigrant lost at the border $450,000 per person, which is insane. And I think people are really going to be fed up with that and people are really going to be angry about that. And... Yeah, that's going to, yeah, and, and they're going to come out and vote for Donald Trump because they they don't want to see that. So, yeah, Arizona should be going to Donald Trump by 1% tilt margin. Uh, and now Texas, I think it will go to Donald Trump by 5%, about the same margin it went to him in 2020. And by the way, the electoral votes in some states will be changing, whether they go, whether they have less electoral votes or more like Texas. Texas will have more. Um, Michigan will have less, and some states will just stay the same like Wyoming. Uh, just a little reminder there. And yeah, Texas, same thing. The border thing uh, will help Democrats because those illegal immigrants will be voting Democrat. A lot of them will, which is why, which is which is the Democrats' plan, which is why they opened up the border so they can be voting Democrat, helping them. Even though they're illegal, they shouldn't be able to vote. Um, and also... Just like Arizona, another advantage is people who are real Texas citizens, real American citizens, will be fed up with this garbage that Joe Biden has put in their border and possibly vote for Donald Trump, which is advantages for both parties. But at the end of the day, Texas, at this point, is going to be red. Uh, yeah, maybe in 2020, maybe 2020, 32, 2032 to 2036, somewhere around there in the mid 2030s, it can possibly go blue. Uh, 2032 at least. Uh, that's the earliest it'll go blue. And some people are overestimating Texas for the Republicans, for the Democrats. Sorry, and I just have to disagree. I know over time it will be going blue. Over time, it it ha Texas has to go blue, but at this point, it's gonna stay red, uh, because of the migrant. 
uh, surge. And now in Minnesota, uh, I do. So, like I said, Minnesota did vote no to abolish or dismantle the police department. And, he, and here is the data on the screen. So, yes, here's the data on the screen, as you can see. Uh, and then question two says, replace Minneapolis Police Department, and 56% voted no, and 44% voted yes, which is about 11% difference, and I was kind of shocked. I expected it to be at least closer within the margin of five. If it were to vote no, which it did, I expected it to be within the margin of five, not 11, and I actually wasn't going to be surprised if they voted yes, because Minnesota... You seen it last year with the BLM stuff. It has turned into a socialist city. Minneapolis has because it is under democratic control. But I'm kind of shocked that it voted no. I mean, it looked like it, people were pretty much under control. Whoever was at BLM uh, events, but at the end of the day, some of those people that even support BLM and even went to those uh, events actually voted no, and that's pretty interesting. But yeah, that's gonna affect it a lot. Uh, maybe in favor of, you know, Republicans. I mean, some Democrats, you know, voted no on this. So, I mean, it kind of tells you something. So, yeah, here is the data from that. And then I think Minnesota will actually uh, remain for the Democrats. And I think Minnesota should go to Joe Biden by 1%. I will be extremely shocked if it would go to Donald Trump. I think in Joe Biden's worst case scenario, it will go to him by 1% which I think he will have his worst case scenario in Minnesota, uh, just in that state, which is a tilt margin. Yeah, I just think people are starting to wake up across the country, and just like in Minnesota, that, that you know, the Democrats are having a, a agenda that tries to control people. I, I think people are waking up. I mean, you've seen it. Minnesota voted no to dismantle uh, the police department. And if Joe Biden were to win this state by more, maybe 5%, I still wouldn't be shocked. Um, and now Florida, it's one of those states that heavily shifted to the right, just like uh, Iowa and Ohio. Uh, uh, I think it will go to Don Donald Trump by likely margin. By the way, this is only if Joe Biden runs. By the way, I do not think he's running, but this is if he runs. Um, just a heads up there. And I think he will win it by 6.8%. And definitely if Ron DeSantis is his vice president, or running mate actually, uh, it'll help him out a lot. And I don't see Joe Biden winning the state at all. If he does win the state, honestly, that's just unrealistic. Don't even think about that. Um, but now, Wisconsin. I actually have it flipping back to the Republicans. Uh, I believe 2020 was a down year for Republicans in the Rust Belt, especially in the Rust Belt. And I think people are in the Rust Belt realizing that Joe Biden is just horrible. Or sorry, not Georgia. I mean, I just filled in Georgia. I meant Wisconsin. Wisconsin should go to Donald Trump by point point six percent, zero point six percent. Similar margin how uh, when he won it in twenty sixteen. Uh, I believe the uh, I believe most of the Rust Belt will be handled like it was in twenty sixteen, or it should look like how it was in twenty sixteen, because Joe Biden is turning into uh, a failed politician. His own party is going against him. In that case. He's not going to get a lot of Democratic turnout in Rust Belt in 2024, which could cause a Republican wave year. Um, and now in the state of Georgia, I have Georgia flipping back to the Republicans. It was just like in 2020. It was a down year. It should go to the Republicans by 3%, uh, which is actually a lean, yeah, pretty much a lean margin, actually. Tilt to lean margin, somewhere around there. And... You can argue that it could possibly go to Joe Biden, maybe because of the BLM stuff. But if you take a look at Minnesota, states that have BLM effects, they voted no to dismantle the police department, which is which is why I think Georgia should go to Donald Trump. Um, so, yeah. And now in the state of North Carolina, I think North Carolina should go to Donald Trump by 2%. He won it back in 2020 by 1.5%. And I think uh, Republicans winning in Virginia. Virginia is is the closest state to North Carolina, uh, besides South Carolina. So, in that case, Virginia could maybe share ties with North Carolina, and they both can be trending even more Republican. I know North Carolina, you know, the African-American black voter turnout could affect and help the Democrats, but at the same time, Virginia is kind of similar to North Carolina. And if Virginia is going to go 
red, then North Carolina can possibly go even more red. So yeah, 2% sounds right, which is going to be a tilt margin. Still going to be close either way. And now Virginia, which is very interesting because this is another effect. As you can see, the race from yesterday, Glenn Youngkin has won. This is a state that went to Joe Biden by 10%, which is supposed to be a likely Democratic state, right? They should be comfortable, right? Well, guess what? Glenn Youngkin won, the Republican. And he played part of the Democrats' Democratic role, kind of. I mean, he he, he, he kind of, you know, he disguised as a Democrat, kind of. He dis disguised as a moderate. I mean, he's very Republican, though. He's conservative, but he had to disguise in order to win, and that's very smart. I like that unique. I like that plan. And he went the role. He went with the roles of education, which that's not really a thing that Republicans do. They go with more kind of more so of election fraud and cutting taxes, which he did go with those things, especially cutting taxes. But Democrats mostly talk about education. Well, he went ahead and talked about education. And Terry McAuliffe, the reason why he lost was because of those horrible comments. He just made a mistake, which turned off Democrats in that state. Um, which is why it's shifted, trended right, heavily. Not really heavily, but um, yeah. And this is this is this is effect. And I think seeing this results for the governor's race is going to help the Republicans in Virginia. But um, I still think it's going to go to the Democrats. I mean, yeah, it can go. I mean, you know, for New Hampshire, they have a Republican former governor or Republican incumbent actually, and the state's Democrat. So I can see the same thing with Virginia, a Republican governor, but I think it should go to the, it should go to Joe Biden. If it doesn't, then he's the worst candidate in the world. Um, and yeah, Virginia should go to him by 5.5%. I know that's half of what he got last time. And that's the effect of the Virginia race. Um, and he's going to win it by a lean margin. He won it by 10. I think he's going to win it by five, a huge difference it's just because of the Virginia race. Governor race, actually, which is a huge effect. And now New Jersey, it's also going to be a huge effect as well. But Murphy is barely hanging on to that lead. And he is a Democrat in a safe Democratic state. Um, this is a state Joe Biden won by 16%. And guess what? He's barely leading by less than 1%. And if that's going to happen, then you're seeing Democratic states that are kind of shifting to the right, and that's not good. And not shifting to the right by 1% to 2%. Shifting to the right by 10% in both of these states, like Virginia. And that's not good for the Democrats. So I think New Jersey can be closer than expected, um, but still go to the Democrats. Joe Biden by 9.6%. Once him is by 16%, it should, should go to him by 9.6%, which is a little a 5 less, which is a huge difference. But instead of a safe margin, it should be a likely margin. Just a little bit closer. Um, a little bit closer. And Virginia is going to be a lot closer, though. So, yeah. And now the next state, uh, which is going to be Michigan. Now, Michigan, it was hard for me to decide. I, I had Donald Trump going to win it at some times. But then I had to make my slight prediction. I have Joe Biden winning it by 0.3%. It's going to be really close. It's going to be within the margin of margin of five percent, zero point five percent, definitely. I mean, you can argue that well because Joe Biden won in twenty twenty by two percent, which is a huge different, which is a huge um, difference from Hillary Clinton back in twenty sixteen. But the whole country is turning on Joe Biden, and that's going to affect in Michigan. Michigan, a lot of those people will, will be turning over. And voting Republican or not even voting at all. If they don't want to vote for, for a Republican, then they're probably not going to vote for Joe Biden. That's for sure. And there's going to be people like that in Michigan, which can make this race closer. But at the end of the day, Joe Biden should win this by 0.3%. If he doesn't, I still won't be surprised. But it's a must win. If Joe Biden loses Michigan, he's basically going to lose all three of the Rust Belt states, no doubt. Now, Pennsylvania, I do have it flipping back to Donald Trump, just like in 2016. He should win, he should win this state by 0.5%, which is tilt margin. The whole Rust Belt, in my opinion, will be within the tilt margin, within the margin of 1%, I believe. And Joe Biden uh, banned um, the Keystone Pipeline, which costed jobs. Obviously, thousands of jobs have been lost because, because of him canceling the Keystone Pipeline, which leaves people at home without a job. And people are fed up with that, 
So they're going to not vote for Joe Biden and possibly even vote for Donald Trump, which is my theory. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what I think is going to go on with, with uh, Pennsylvania. Now, New Hampshire, the last and final state. Um, I just don't see Donald Trump winning it. I will be extremely shocked, shocked if Donald Trump wins New Hampshire. He lost in New Hampshire against Hillary Clinton. And, yeah, I, I know he wasn't that popular back then. He's way more popular now. He only had 60 million votes. Now he has 70 million. Um, but, I mean, Hillary Clinton was still a terrible candidate. And if he still lost against a terrible candidate, Joe Biden may be a tiny bit better. But they're, Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden, I see them as the same. They both just, they're both terrible. Um. And New Hampshire should be closer than it was in 2020. I believe back in 2020, New Hampshire went to Joe Biden by 7%, which was they, uh, pretty much, I don't know. But yeah, I think this is hard for me. I think New Hampshire should go to Joe Biden by 4%. I mean, I, it wasn't hard for me picking Joe Biden. I, I, I had it going to Joe Biden, but within the margin, margin, uh, I have it going to Joe Biden by 4%, which is a lean margin. If he wins it by 1%, I still won't be surprised. But he better win this state. If he doesn't, then that's just going to be horrible. And there you guys go. This is my 2024 presidential election prediction. Updated with the governor races effect from yesterday and the Minnesota effect on voting no to d dismantle the police department. Um, t and by the way, tell me what you think about Minnesota voting no to d dismantle the police department. Or at least Minneapolis. Let me know. Were you shocked about that? Let me know in the comment section. I was kind of shocked with the margin as well. Um, and let me know your prediction in the 2024 election, uh, in, in the, in the comment section down below with these three effects updated. And I have Donald Trump winning 294 electoral votes, improving a lot from 2020, uh, and staying around the same like he did in 2016. I, I, I kind of smell 2016 vibes. Uh, for the 2024 election, do you, do you, do you smell those vibes as well? Let me know. And Joe Biden should be able to get 244 electoral votes. And yeah, this is if Joe Biden runs. By the way, I don't think he's running, and that could be a, that can be another video. But but the thing is, uh, if I do make another prediction that Joe Biden is not the candidate, which I think he won't be, I think he will announce his retirement and then run away in a small island with Hunter Biden. I don't really know who the other candidate will be. I doubt it will be Kamal Harris uh, because Democrats know she's terrible and they don't want another Joe Biden. Uh, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you think Joe Biden will run 2024? I don't. This is just if he does run. And who would that candidate be?